Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. In this video, let's take a look at comparison operators and how recent changes in the standard may affect your code. Comparison operators, breaking change in C++20. Computer languages with built-in data types usually provide a mechanism for comparing values. When the language supports creating user-defined types, with classes, structures, or other abstractions, comparisons can be awkward to invoke. Languages like C only support writing free functions for comparing values, and the syntax can be hard to read. In C++, we have the freedom to write comparison operators as either a class method or a free function. Operator overloading allows us to call comparison operators using normal algebraic syntax, like a greater than b, instead of having to use method or function call syntax. In C++20, the standard committee added a requirement for the compiler to auto-generate comparison operators. This is a really nice feature, since writing these can be repetitive and involve duplicating code. As with everything new and wonderful they add, there are often small details which end up breaking older code. Yes, we found one. There is a long-standing debate about where comparison operators should be implemented. Some say they should be class methods, and other developers argue for free functions. So do the changes in C++20 reshape the answer to this question? We are going to start by looking at the definition of comparison operators and where they should be implemented. Then we will show an example which demonstrates a problem which can occur when compiling with C++20. The purpose of a comparison operator is simply to compare two values with each other and make some determination. These values can be anything, like an std vector, a string, or an integer. It could also be a user-defined class, like an employee or some inventory item, where the ability to compare has a meaning. The two values can be the same data type or different data types. For example, it would be reasonable to compare an integer to a care. However, it really doesn't make sense to compare an employee to a floating point number. There are six comparison operators. Four of them are called the relational operators, and they compare two values to determine which one is larger. The two equality operators determine if two values are equal or not equal. There are multiple built-in comparison operators, which are part of the C++ core language. For example, some of these compare two integers or two pointers. There are additional comparison operators provided in the standard library that do things like comparing the values of an std string or an std tuple. The comparison operators provided in the standard all return a boolean indicating if that particular test is true for the given objects. User-defined comparison operators are allowed to return any data type. However, the preferred type is always a bool. A comparison operator can be implemented as a class method or a free function. As a reminder, in C++ the terms class method, member function, and method are often used interchangeably. When a comparison operator is implemented as a class method, the leftmost argument denotes which object to call the operator method on. In our first line of code, the operator less than method must belong to the class for object A. The parameter, which is B, will be compared to some data value in object A. A free function can also be referred to as a non-member function or a global function. When a free function is used to implement a comparison operator, the two values are passed as normal function parameters. When implementing a comparison operator as a free function, either one or both of the values can be implicitly converted. 
whereas only argument B can be converted in the method implementation. Developers disagree about where comparison operators should be implemented. There is no definitive rule. However, there are some use cases which favor one option over the other. A method should be used if the implementation needs access to class data members. This seems reasonable, because otherwise a friend declaration will be needed, and friends can lead to maintainability problems. Another practice is to prefer using a free function when comparing values of different data types. If the comparison operator is implemented as a class method, then it must be located in the class corresponding to the left-hand argument. If this value is a built-in type, or belongs to some third-party library, it will not be possible to add a new method to that existing class. In this case, you will need to use a free function. In general, there are more use cases that support using a free function. Comparison operators changed in C++20 with the addition of the three-way comparison operator. The syntax for this is operator less than, equal, greater than, and is often referred to as the spaceship operator due to the appearance of these three concatenated symbols. The purpose of this operator is to write one method which provides enough information for the compiler to generate or synthesize the real comparison operators. This can reduce the amount of repetitive code developers were required to produce and instead transfer this responsibility to the compiler. When you declare a spaceship operator, the return type must match an enum type, which is defined in the standard. Your operator needs to return a single enum value to indicate whether A is less than, equal to, or greater than B. There are lots of rules in the standard about how to use a default implementation of a three-way comparison operator. When all six comparison operators are generated, and when the compiler will only generate the four relational operators. We will present more of this information in a future talk. For right now, let's take a look at an example which shows how the implementation of traditional comparison operators are affected by the three-way comparison operator. This example shows how to implement a comparison operator for a generic container class. We have omitted some of the code for clarity. The equality comparison for const iterators was implemented as a method since it required access to a class data member. This method will also be called when the pass parameter for other is a non-const iterator. In our full implementation, we have code to implicitly convert from a non-const iterator to a const iterator. But we also needed the ability to compare a non-const iterator with a const iterator. Our free function was designed specifically to handle this case. The implementation reverses the parameters and then calls the class method. Our libraries are built with C++17 and this code worked exactly as expected, with no errors, and all unit tests were passing. When we started building the unit tests with C++20, we found a problem. In one test case, we called this equality comparison operator and passed a non-const iterator followed by a const iterator. Everything compiled, but the test hung. What happened and why? Keep in mind, the code we just showed does not use a three-way comparison operator. At the time we were debugging our code, we were not compiling the unit tests with all warnings turned on. If we had, then we might have found the culprit a bit sooner, but maybe not. When you compile this code using GCC with dash W all turned on, 
you get a warning that the free function calls itself recursively with reversed arguments. The clang warning is actually a bit more vague and simply says, all paths through this function will call itself. It would have been nicer if the message had said something like, the three-way comparison operator side effects broke your code. So what did we find? When they added the three-way comparison operator, they also changed the way all existing comparison operators are called. One of the most significant changes is the compiler can swap the arguments of a comparison to find a better match. As we mentioned, the implementation of our free function comparison operator was supposed to call the class method. The compiler decided to swap the arguments again since it decided calling the free function was a better match. The result was calling the free function meant it would simply call itself and lead to an infinite recursion. Once we understood what was happening, the process of correcting our code involved changing one line, which is shown here in red. We modified the function to use method call syntax instead of algebraic syntax. Now the C++20 compiler must invoke our class method because that is what the code says. The compiler cannot rewrite this call since it is no longer using the syntax for an overloaded comparison operator. Our code is better and it works with C++17 and C++20. At some point, when we migrate our libraries to require C++20 as the minimum standard, we will change all of our containers to use the three-way comparison instead of our current approach. Until then, our current implementation is working and we have improved our unit testing process. For more information about the Copper Spice project, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching, and we hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back for our next video.